to talk about my experience in public school, um, middle school was really tough because that's when I started to take my hijab seriously and started to wear abayas. Um, I actually had really a really bad experience with, um, in, in seventh grade, I was actually like choked with my hijab, which is so crazy to say out loud now that like it's been so, so, so long since I talked about it. But yeah, this guy, he didn't under dare. The teacher stepped out for a couple minutes and um, she was getting a paper she'd printed. And um, d- earlier in the day, it was a dare. Um, one of the girls that didn't like me told this other boy who, you know, liked her, if he would harm me, that she, you know, would, you know, give him a chance, I guess. And so he was like, okay, what do I do? And by the end of the period, um, they came to the conclusion that they would literally try to, like, choke me with hijab. And I, I don't know if they intended to choke me exactly, but because I was wearing so many pins in my hijab, it was really hard. I, I think they intended to take it off. Well, I actually don't know. But when when they tried taking it off, I was wearing, re- like, maybe seven pins to keep it secure. And they kept pulling it, and they ended up not taking it off. But then they ended up just you know, just tying it around and just, like, choking me. And um, when the teacher came back, she saw it, and I was just crying, and um, he got expelled. And um, there was, like, a slight news article on it, and that, that was really it. Wait, sorry, and sister, then, I have a quick question about this. Uh, were you in an area where there were a lot of Muslims, or were you the all, a few Muslims in the school? Like, what was your the population of Muslims in that school, you would say, was? Um, so I live in northern Virginia, and there is a huge population of Muslims, but... Not all of them are visibly Muslim, if that makes sense, and and not a lot of them practice, but they are they are, they're Muslim, right? So um, I went to a school where there were not many hijabis, but they they were still there. If that makes sense, and um, yeah, I think it, sisters wearing hijab as well. That's a struggle, um, in in in, in um, public school as well. I think um, that experience I just mentioned aside, I think it's really hard for them to 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 take part of just even having um. You know, just even wearing the the uniform, like I I remember I had to wear pants and I wasn't comfortable with that, so um, they still had to make me wear it, and um, I didn't like that. But um, yeah, and then graduating high school I think was probably the best time because like now I get to choose my schedule, can you know coordinate with my you know, the five daily prayers, I can you know go to Jama'a and that, and that type of thing, and I could you know wear my hijab comfortably. Um, but I think in college it's like a little different as well because I remember like even because I graduated alhamdulillah like this year like uh like about two weeks ago and they bought alcohol to the the last final and I've never been in a position where I was like next to alcohol let alone having someone near me drink it and I was crazy to see um and I think if somebody was like very weak in their dean they would give in or if somebody was in a position because I think the best thing the best advice ever for somebody who's going to go through that experience is probably like surround yourself with people who um, are very like well-versed in Islam, Islamic knowledge and um, are really good, like a mentor basically, um, because you can turn to them every time you have some type of, you know, doubt for matter, like they bring up to you in school, like evolution and, you know, uh, LGBT and all these other social issues they bring up to you. You can, you know, go back to another sister who's knowledgeable and she'll tell you, okay, this is how you should act and this is how you should, you know, um, this is your stance as a Muslim and, and that type of thing. And, and alhamdulillah, I did have that, but I could see if somebody didn't, how they would, you know, end up because it could be like that, that could be the, the turn of, you know, a lot of things for, for their iman. I do have a question for you though, real quick. Did you have, did you attend Go some ahead. kind of a madrasa like on a weekend or did you have some kind of alternative like Islamic education besides like, I mean, like some people will do like a full time public school and then have a madrasa on the side to go to on the weekend. Did you have like what, what what was your Islamic foundation like? How did you cope with having to rectify the two and like you know who did you turn to to to, to have those questions or confusing things mm-hmm. answered? So Alhamdulillah, my parents are uh, very practicing, uh, and I do have brothers who are well well uh, versed in the Quran and and Islamic studies as well, and they basically helped me a lot. And then I also have a, a sister. I did I did get Islamic like knowledge as a kid, but it was mainly just have the Quran. Like I, they would just taught me to memorize the Quran um, and sometimes even like after I'm done with the Quran you just graduate and you, you don't go back but um, alhamdulillah like I would attend weekly halakats with a couple of local sisters and um, they were very helpful and I think just one day like one day two hours maybe um, of just pure sisterhood you know food good vibes could change the course of 
you know, a sister struggling with all types of things in high school and college, subhanAllah. But um, I took I took solace in them um, and they were very helpful in, in tackling these issues and, you know, giving evidences of what, what we should believe as Muslims. Um, but alhamdulillah, my parents did not allow me because I remember there were times where I wanted to do these things, where I wanted to go out, you know, to, to basketball games and, and football games where there might be, you know, free mixing and, you know, um, drinks, uh, adult drinks and stuff like this. And then also like um, drugs, like they would they would have drugs all the time on campus. Like, yeah, they would bring weed to campus all the time. And uh, I was introduced to like what it was right then and there. And um, I remember just walking around campus like, wow, it smells like burning grass. And it's like, wow, that's <laughs> weed. And I was like, what? I smell this all the time. And I was just culture shock. But um yeah, I just, my parents never let me, like, do things. Like, if I had the slightest inclination of removing my hijab, my mom would just, no, you're not. <laughs> Sit back home. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, I don't know if um, Islamic school was really, like, a thing back when I was in, like, elementary school. Um, but I ended up teaching at a school, because um, I did work at a Islamic school um, last year. Or, no, last, I guess, school year. Um, I was a high school teacher at this school, uh, maybe 10 minutes from D.C. And, um, like, I, I forgot who said this earlier because I, I wasn't looking at the screen, but there's huge differences between a public school and in an in um, asylum school. SubhanAllah, it's like, working there was like, I felt like I was in a Muslim country almost. It was because of, you know, slight things here and there you'd see. Like, you know how they tell you to do the, the Pledge of Allegiance? In in public school, it's like, we did, you know, a Qadr al-Sabah, Right. In, like the morning, morning as car, the morning uh, remembrance as like um, our assembly. And I thought that was just amazing because that was like, I wish I had that, you know? And then um, the dress code, abaya, hijab, you know, no ifs or nothing. Like it was just that you would come to that. So there was no, you know, um, I guess you, people won't say anything for you, you dressing differently and stuff like that. It's just everyone's wearing the same thing. And then um, segregated girls are sitting on that side, boys are sitting on the side. That was amazing. Um, yeah, and breaks for Jama'a prayer together, you know, um, just amazing things. Like the kids would, you know, have these days where it's like uh, imitate a Sahaba day, you know, um, speak Arabic all day, like type of day. Whereas a school, it was like you'd have, I, I guess not, it's not a problematic, but they would have like things like crazy hair day and you'd feel left out for not being able to participate because you're wearing hijab. But it's just small things like that that made me really appreciate you know, um, Islamic schools and, and people who put these together. But the only issue I think that Islamic schools have is, you know, um, they're really pricey. And I think someone else mentioned this, but, um, and it's not really, because I wasn't getting paid that much either. And I was like, well, where's the money going? It's like, it, it's so expensive to keep an Islamic school running in um, this area because of like, I guess there are laws that like, I actually don't know what goes behind it, but um, it's, it's usually for the Islamic school to be kept running that it's it's really pricey it's not like you know oh this is really you know amazing education it's it's standard education but it's just i think it's worth it um but that's just my opinion um but um yeah 